Here's an interesting problem. We have a function that has a natural log and a secant in it. We want to find its arc length. And since this is a function of x, we're going to use this formula right here. And we're going to integrate from 0 to pi over 4. Now the first thing we need to do is take a derivative of y with respect to x. The derivative of a natural log is just 1 over the argument of the natural log. But then don't forget that the chain rule says that we have to multiply by the derivative of what was inside this function, which is the derivative of secant x which is secant x tangent x. You'll notice then that we get some pretty convenient cancellation. The secant in the numerator and the denominator cancel, leaving us with tangent x as our derivative of y with respect to x. We can then take that function and plug it in right here into the formula, and let's see what integral we get. Okay, we get the square root of one plus tangent squared. More commonly, we write that like this. And either you remember your trig identities, or at least you remember this simple one. Cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x equals one. And you remember that you can divide both sides of this equation by cosine squared x and simplify to get that 1 plus tangent squared x simplifies to secant squared x. So under the radical, we now have secant squared x. Taking a square root of that just leaves us with the integral of secant x. Now just when things are starting to look simple, you remember that the integral of secant x is actually not that simple. Uh, you can look it up in a table, and there are longer ways to derive this. But long story short, the integral of secant x is the natural log of secant x plus tangent x. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 4. Plugging in our upper and lower limits of integration, and recalling the things that we definitely need to know from the unit circle, we get this as an answer, and we should remember that natural log of 1 is just 0. You could also write 2 over the square root of 2 as just the square root of 2. And I think that this final answer right here looks pretty nice. Okay, as always, I hope that that video helps you out, and I hope to see you in the next one.